Hey, so I'm sure that some of you have been seeing those Kirby Challenge videos recently where you beat a game with as few jumps or certain inputs as possible, and this video is no different. I mean, you can read after all. So you know that we're going to find out how many inhales each mainline Kirby game takes to beat. The rules are simple. No inhaling is allowed, but helpers, abilities, and things that can be collected without having to inhale are fair game. And the same can be said with glitches. Now that we have all that out of the way, let's just see how things go and begin. We're beginning with the 30-year-old Kirby game that started it all, Kirby's Dreamland. I'd say he had a pretty good debut in this Game Boy game, but... Yeah, you can't really beat this game without inhaling. That's almost all Kirby can do in this game, so it's not that big of a surprise. Fortunately, we can kill enemies by puffing air bullets at them. It's not the fastest, but it's a lot better than nothing. It's really the bosses that are going to be our main problem. Since abilities aren't in this game, Kirby can't do anything that isn't inhaling or spitting out. You can't even eat two objects at once and deal two pieces of damage. So Poppy Bros Jr. will take three sucks to defeat, and Wispy Woods will take six, meaning that Green Greens takes nine total inhales to beat. Next, we have Castle Lolo. In this stage, it's going to be a lot more interesting to say the least. Trust me. The first half of this stage is like Green Greens, going through the enemies like they're nothing, and there's even an invincibility candy to make things easier. However, we need to beat Lolo Lolo in three hits since we have nothing else to work with. It's the next part that's more interesting though, and it takes place in this room here. There's a glitch known as the Infinite Spicy Curry glitch, where if you eat a spicy curry at the exact same moment you die, you get to keep it. You do have to inhale the curry to get it, but it is worth it. The Kirby Wiki says it's infinite, but it sure wasn't infinite for me, and I did try it like three times. Not only do you have to do this maneuver with almost no room for error, but you also have to get to Lolo and La 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 before it runs out. If you get the curry normally, you won't be able to make it to them in time. But if you can make it to the fight in time, you can kill Lolo and La 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 with just the spicy curry by itself, which saves us from six sucks. As a result, you can beat Castle Lolo by inhaling only four times. Next, we have Flow Islands, which can be beaten without inhaling at all. There are no mini bosses, and the boss Kubula can be taken down with just a mint leaf, which can be grabbed without eating. For the first time, you can beat this stage with zero inhales. Next, we have Bubbly Clouds, which really isn't that special. The mint leaf in the secret room before Krakow Jr. can't hurt him, and the spicy curry in the room before the room before Krakow runs out before you can reach him, which is unfortunate for the run, but it's fortunate for my sanity. So thus, Bubbly Clouds takes 9 inhales to beat. Next we have Castle DDD. There weren't really any glitches or tricks I could find to take advantage of, and it really would have helped since otherwise we have to beat all the bosses normally. With Wispy Woods, Lolo and La 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 and Krakow taking 6 sucks each, and DDD taking 10, this stage will require 28 whole sucks to Ouch. That took over double the inhales of all the other stages combined. But hey, at least we're done with the game. And with a total of 50 inhales being required to beat Kirby's Dreamland. This game is short, but beating Castle Lolo in one go really isn't that easy. So good luck with that. And don't worry, with future games having abilities, they probably won't require nearly as many inhales. for Kirby's Adventure, a game that introduced us to the revolutionary copy abilities. With these, we don't have to worry about inhaling to fight bosses anymore. Ironically, despite this game being longer than Dreamland 1, you can beat this game in a shorter amount of time. And that's solely due to this. This is the credits. Yes, you heard me right. You can beat this game in its first stage in less than one minute. Kirby's Adventure is somehow even glitchier than Dreamland, and one of its glitches are a credits warp, allowing you to beat the game using only one inhale. First, you get stoned by eating two Waddle Doos at once, and you press A as soon as you swallow them to get it from the ability mix. Then, in the third room, you jump and pause at the same time at this slope to do a really small jump when you unpause. If you got the timing and spot just right, 
you can clip into the ground and get into the water without the game realizing you're in water. If the game hates you, it'll crash. But if you're lucky enough where you get out of the stone at the right time, the game will take you to the end. But if you think that's cheap, you'll still need to inhale once to get an ability to fight bosses and mini-bosses. Not only that, but since you lose your ability whenever you get hurt and you'll have to inhale it to get back, you'll have to play almost the entire game without taking damage, almost ever. It's by no means impossible, but when you have parts that are like this, somehow just trying to perform the pixel-perfect game-breaking glitch will be simpler. So, you can beat Kirby's Adventure by only having to inhale once. This is miles better than Kirby's Dreamland, all thanks to abilities and glitches. But it's not over yet, not even close. Let's hope the other games are more forgiving. Kirby's Dreamland 2, the Game Boy game that has our sweet old animal friends, Rick, Koo, and Kine. This game also has abilities, which helps us out. In fact, this game will be almost similar to Kirby's Adventure in that sense, using abilities and all. But it's not the exact same. For most of the game, you'll need to inhale and get the fire, or burning, ability in the second stage to use it. And you'll want to make sure that you use the correct animal friends to help you out with certain areas. It'll be hard doing that without taking damage, and it could be even worse than Adventure. But you might wonder, why the fire ability specifically? Well, there's a room in 4-2 that requires you to have it to break the ice blocks that are blocking the gold door. But, then you can breeze through the rest of the game and beat it normally, right? Oh. Yeah, this section. Once you're at 6-2, you'll need to get rid of your animal friend and fire to get the ice ability, since it's the only way to pass the room. So, that means a second hail is required. Remember this though, don't get any animal friends for the rest of the game. I say that because the route before the DDD fight at the end of the game does not allow animal friends to pass. And you need to remove your ability to get rid of your friend. But if you do all that, you'll be golden for the rest of the game. Unless you get hit. Which is kinda hard against angry DDD. Fortunately, Kirby's Dream Land 2 doesn't feel that long to beat. And it can be beaten with only two inhales even if there's weirdly questionable level design at times. Finally, we've made it to my favorite classic Kirby game, Kirby Superstar. This game is the reason why we have ability hats, helpers, and in-depth movesets. But best of all, this game has copyability essences. I cannot understate how magnificent, how glorious, how heavenly, these pedestals are. You can get copy ability essences without inhaling an enemy, a first in the series. This allows us to beat these sub games without inhaling at all. You still need to inhale one enemy in Spring Breeze. There are no ability essences in that sub game, and you'll need an ability since Wispy Woods cannot be beaten any other way. But fortunately, that sub game is completely optional. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So is Gourmet Race, which ironically doesn't require sucking at all. The first required sub-game is Dynablade, and there's a room in the first stage with a sword ability essence that allows us to get a sword, so that we can be Chef Kawasaki and sweep through the other levels easily. There's even a big red button in Candy Mountain that gives you several abilities you can fight Dynablade with. Great Cave Offensive isn't bad either, as there are rooms with ability essences before each boss. The only threat here is Bonkers, who you encounter before you find an ability essence. You can either kill him by getting him to break the breakable blocks that are under him so he falls, or guarding him till he dies. Yeah, I probably should have mentioned that. This game introduced guarding, and even though it doesn't reappear until 7 games later, we can still use it in this game to deal some very, very small amounts of damage. Meaning that even if it's incomprehensibly slow, you can still beat bosses that aren't trees without inhaling or using an ability. For Revenge of Meta Knight, you'll encounter a heavy lobster without any abilities. You don't need to fight him. Next, you'll reach the beach level and you'll encounter Iron Man. Your only choice would be to guard her to death. As scary as the timer might be, you'll have more than enough time to kill her. You'll have barely enough time to beat the chapter before time runs out though. But even if it does and you die, you only have to restart the room that you died in. But that's not it. At the end of the Forest Mountain level, there'll be two cannons. One of them you'll need to use to finish the level, but you'll need fire for that. That's when you'll need another player. Helpers are weird in this game. If a helper loses all their health, 
they'll be in a damaged state until they either die or touch another enemy. In this case, a helper touching Bonkers or Burning Leo will allow the helper to turn into that enemy, and they can ignite the rope so they can move on. And finally, Milky Way Wishes, which is my favorite subgame, not only because it mixes all the game's elements together, but because of its main gimmick. Enemies don't grant copy abilities, instead, there are copy ability essences you can keep forever once you collect them, making finding abilities useful and inhaling completely obsolete. The rest of the subgame is really just using those. Now that we're done with Kirby Superstar, we can finally say for once, there is a game you can beat without inhaling a single time. That is all thanks to guarding and ability essences. Due to not losing your ability every time you get hit, and Milky Way wishes, playing this way is actually not that bad. Let's hope that the future Kirby games are just as generous as this one though. Now we have Kirby's Dream Land 3, which is really just an updated version of Dream Land 2 gameplay-wise. And I'll be honest, this game in Hailless is nearly identical to Dream Land 2 in terms of strategy. In Stage 5 of Sand Canyon, you'll need the Cutter ability to get past the blocks. Without ability essences, you'll need to inhale one Sir Kibble to get it. Luckily, you'll find a Sir Kibble in the first stage, before you encounter any bosses. But in Stage 4 of Iceberg, you'll need fire to break the ice blocks in the way. So inhaling one fire galbo is your only solution. I'm not sure if there are a lot of glitches in this game, but the few I saw couldn't do much to help. Okay, okay. This might not be completely true, but I might have an idea of how to get past this section. It's only a theory though. In this task video, you're able to clip through a ceiling by switching animal friends it seems. It's done underwater, but on land, the clip occurs when Kirby's in this one block space here. So could you do it on land? in this space here? If that's the case, you can clip through the ceiling and completely ignore the cutter blocks. And you'll only need to inhale once to use fire for the rest of the game. But like I said, I have no idea if that's actually possible. So let's just continue. Other than those parts, the rest of the game is just using your ability and beating DDD, which the game allows you to use animal friends against. I love you, bitch. Kirby's Dream Land 3 requires two sucks to beat for the same reasons as Dream Land 2. There's not much else to say about this game, and the next few might be the same. Kirby 64, the last home console mainline Kirby game for the next 11 years. I will say, I thought this would be the simplest game so far, and for almost the entire game, it is that way. But there's a little more than that due to the boss of Ripple Star, Miracle Matter. Miracle is different from the other bosses in the game. It has 7 different forms based on the 7 abilities that are in the game. But there's a catch. You can only hurt Miracle Matter with the ability that its current form is based on. Since defeating a certain form will cause it to never reappear again, you'll need to get rid of your ability to be able to defeat it when it reaches its other forms. Fortunately, you can save yourself from one suck by eating two enemies at once to get a combination ability consisting of two different abilities in the first stage. You can either get the Fire Arrow or the Jaw ability. I'm not sure about Fire Sword though. This ability will allow you to defeat two of Miracle Matter's phases with it alone. However, you'll still need to inhale at least five more times for its other phases. Kirby 64 isn't that bad to do inhalers. It's pretty simple, but thanks to Mr. Matter, we'll need at least six inhales to beat the game. Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland. It's our first remake in this series. And it's actually its 20th year anniversary this year, so that's pretty cool. As you can guess, this game is very similar to Kirby's Adventure in Halos. It's just a more updated version, but not updated enough to include copy ability essences. Unfortunately for us, this game doesn't have the same game-breaking glitch as Kirby's Adventure has, so you'll have no choice but to beat the game normally. I know, I know, it's absolutely terrifying. You'll need to inhale once for bosses as usual, and multiplayer doesn't really help since players aren't really that interactive with each other. Since this game is more polished than adventure, it's actually not as bad to do. You still have to avoid taking damage for almost the entire run though. But hey, at least the parasol section Yogurt Yard isn't impossible. So this game takes one inhale to beat. And this one's actually the simplest one so far, so that's pretty cool. Now comes Kirby and the Amazing Mirror our only mainline, non-linear Kirby game. Copy ability essences return too, so that's pretty neat. 
Now, this will be a mess if you don't know where exactly to go, but I played this game a little too much as a kid, so I'm not that worried about that. We have better things to worry about anyways. For example, this. We have to inhale to get this block out of the way. I mean, it is a tutorial section after all. But little does this game know. It's got us here, we can't really do much about that. One inhale from something that isn't even an enemy. That is not good. This game is much more merciful after this though. When you're at Moonlight Mansion, you'll encounter Mr. Frosty before any ability essences. This would normally be an issue, but this is Amazing Mirror. So we just need to summon our friends and they'll do the work for us. You might think that this shouldn't count, but there's really no other way here. And it's not like we control them. I'm also convinced they just magically get abilities whenever they're away. After that, we reach our first hub room and our first ability essences, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. If you lose your ability at the boss, you can just call your friends, or worst case scenario, go back to the hub. What order you fight the bosses in doesn't matter either. So you can almost play the game like it's a casual speedrun. And so now we know that Kirby and the Amazing Mirror takes one inhale to a block of all things. How sad. Time for Kirby's Squeak Squad, a game that is for some reason just as short as Dreamland 2, but at least it's a whole lot easier. This is a DS game, so of course they had to shoehorn using the touchscreen, but it actually works pretty well for us. The touchscreen shows Kirby's stomach, in which five abilities can be stored. The best part is that you can collect these things without inhaling, so that means that you're able to collect abilities without inhaling, even better than normal ability essences. Even when you collect the occasional star seal chest, you can still keep a good amount of bubbles. You can keep extra ability bubbles at any point in the game, so as long as you don't get hit too many times, you're good. Even if you do lose all your abilities and you're at a boss, you can just reset and go to a previous level with ability bubbles. It's for this reason that Kirby Squeak Squad is the second game that can be beaten without inhaling at all. Thank you, Ability Essences. Thank you. Finally, we're finishing off part 1 with the beloved remake, Kirby Superstar Ultra. This is another game on the DS, and I'm pretty happy that we made it this far. So starting off, you'll notice something. Something absolutely horrendous. This game actually understands how difficulty curves work, so you have no choice but to complete Spring Breeze, which we know takes one inhale. Huh. I just realized it's been a bit since I've last used the word suck. Kirby Superstar Ultra doesn't have any significantly new impactful mechanics, so we still can't beat Wispy Woods without an ability. That also applies to the rest of the game. So the original sub-games and hail lists are basically unchanged, but after that we have the extra content. Does that even count? Y you know what, you know what, we'll just do the rest of the game, I don't even care anymore. Starting off with the Revenge of King, it's a harder version of Spring Breeze, and you probably know where I'm going with this. There are no ability essences anywhere like in Spring Breeze, then we have to deal with Fan Fan in Wispy Woods. Even if Fan Fan wasn't a total pain to kill with guarding, we still have the indestructible Wispy Woods. So we need a second inhale to get the job done. Luckily though, the last few sub-games don't start Kirby at all, and if you include the true arena, there are already ability essences, so inhaling isn't even a question. Kirby Superstar Ultra takes two inhales to beat. With more content, something like that is more likely. Beating this game in hell was as just as forgiving as the original Superstar though, which is a good thing. Finally, now we're done two thirds of the mainline Kirby series, and five remain. We'll see how those modern games go in part two when that comes out. Throughout the ten Kirby games we played, we had 65 total inhales in the end, and most of them were from Kirby's Dreamland, which didn't have abilities, so that makes sense. This is how I'd rate beating these games in Hailless, hardest to easiest. Either way, I'm happy I began this, and I look even more forward to finishing it, and I hope you do too. I recorded this a week prior to the video being uploaded, but I do wish all of you have a Merry Christmas. We all really need one. So see ya, and I hope you all have a great winter break.